nice chocolate now. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this will continue. I'm uh, rather afraid not. So don't have too much hopes concerning sweets. With the next speaker, Zanya Gavesevich uh, from a Digital Marketing Agency. And she will continue right now without any pause about digital marketing. And uh, I think it will be quite as fascinating as the lecture we just had. So please, Sonia. Uh, thank you, guys. No sweets, I'm afraid, but I hope you tell good stories. So when I was your age, uh, this is what I looked like almost 10 years ago, uh, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I didn't even know what I wanted to do when I finished high school. So as it usually happens in our region, when we don't know what to do, our parents are there to help us. So I had, like many, I guess, two options. Either go into economics, if I had any inclination towards math, or law school. Why these two? Because our parents are thinking practical. Both are broad enough, so by the time we finish and graduate, we kind of have time to figure out what we want to do. And the second one is because it's practical enough, so by the time we finish, we actually know how to do something. And you can say I was touched because every time I mentioned maybe going into English or learning Japanese, my father would, would immediately start feeling faint, you know, have a heart attack. So it was emotional, uh, like, is it the best? But what happened is that, as it happens often, my parents were right. And I actually really loved economics. Actually, my favorite subjects were uh, business consultancy, organizational behavior, strategic management, and I would, of course, like a totally, totally excited nerd, spend all my hours reading case studies and reading management books and building these imaginary scenarios in my head, thinking, okay, how would I react in this situation? How would I solve the business case I was reading about? So, when I got an opportunity at the end of my first year of economics at the university to volunteer at a local management consulting agency, you can imagine I was out of my mind with excitement. It was the dream come true. Now I could finally implement in practice everything I learned about and read about. And at that, that time, nobody was happier. Uh, I had the opportunity to not only implement everything, but to work with different industries, with different companies, to be the one, the companies and the, these uh, big managers from the important businesses come to me when they needed a different perspective or when they needed a problem, when they had a problem needed solving. And of course, it all looked very grown up and professional and I really loved that as well. But after a while, I, ha I realized that even though in the five years I was there, I learned a lot, and only half of it was related to business management, that the enthusiasm and the love for what you do can only take you so far. If I can refer to the Kate's lecture the day before, she talked about burnout, and that is what happened to me. After five years of long working hours and working in a very demanding industry, I crashed. I was too young and too inexperienced to know how to manage that level of stress, and I completely burned out. From somebody who was excited and out of this world of happiness, I became someone who was just tired. And I thought to myself at one point, you know, maybe we should just forget these dreams about big careers and stay home and bake cookies. At least then I know they work and they're things. So I decided to quit without any idea or plan on what I wanted to do next. And my goal, there was no goal. I just wanted to change something. So I wanted just, you know, here is my resignation. I really love working with you, but I can't go any further. And my plan was to just recuperate and not do anything for a while. Of course, it never happens that way. And thank God, because this is the people I work with today. Uh, this is the marketing agency I lead as a CEO. I became a CEO at the age of 27. Uh, I have an amazing team of 12 people and we try to create a life and a work environment that we want, that works for us, based on all the experiences we had previously. So with this presentation, I want to show you how I got from there 
to here. And in order to do that, I'm also going to tell you a little story. So when I decided to resign, a few weeks later, a friend of mine asked me, would you want to work as a freelancer for a local company in Montenegro? And I said, yeah, sure, what, what would that mean? So it would mean you wouldn't be really employed, but you could start maybe writing one or two blog posts for them, for their product, to be published on their blog, and see how it goes. And now, after five years of studying and working at the same time, and being at home for two weeks, you can imagine me being like, okay, I decided to go home and stay home, but this is not actually working. I have to do something, you know? So then I said, of course, said yes. And I thought to myself, okay, my English is good, because the, the text was in English. I know how to communicate, I know how to write, it will be fine. I mean, I will just, you know, research it a bit, I know the topic, I will write it, it will sound nice, and that's it, right? How hard can it be? Well, wrong. Do you know this scene? So let's just say that the first feedback I received on my work was less brutal than this. <laughs> it didn't work out. But on the other hand, uh, that is actually a good thing, because it, it means I had a mentor who was patient and kind enough to go with me through every sentence and every paragraph, to completely change the structure, to invest her time and tell me what I needed to change in order to make it better. And after maybe working with her for a month and a half, we got eight blog posts out of my one original idea and the text I came with her at the beginning. So, this is the process I went through. It's not only knowing, okay, I have an idea, I will write it down, and it will be accepted as something that the company could actually use. The thing is, when we create something in digital marketing, whether it's a blog post, it's a video, or a social media post, there is a lot of that goes behind it. And the first of all is knowing what do you want to do, what do you want to say. And who are you telling it to? So, a basic example. What is the goal of these two ads? What do they want to achieve? Sell yeah, sell the car. But would you, would you say they are the same? What is the difference? Do you see the price here? So, what do you see? What do you see? The aesthetics, yes. What is it? Something else? Yes, this is the luxury. But the key point are the messages. So, the first one, it is obviously not a luxury car. So, it is not even trying to sell itself as a luxury car. Because they know that a target audience for the Prius, it's not going to be someone who wants an Audi. Who is it going to be? People who want it maybe for... Yes, electric cars. People who care about the environment and who care about the sustainability. Yes, who care about the environment. So the ad, this ad is trying to say the gas produced by a sheep is greater than the gas produced by our car. And that is the message they're trying to send. And the second one, of course, do you know the movie Iron Man? That's the car, and I mean nothing sells better than that. So their message is, then again, maybe you don't have those few minutes, because this goes to zero to 100 and less. So the first thing you have to know is who you are addressing, because when you know who is the audience you're creating something for, you will know how to approach them. And you will also know what stories to tell them. What is the one thing you imagine your favorite movie. Why do you love it so much? Is it because you can relate to it? Is it because of the emotion it builds in you? Is it because of the subject? Because it's what it talks about. So the research shows that our brains on stories, and while we listen to a good story we are really invested in, it lights up. And the hormones that are in our body and in our brain are similar to those when we fall in love. 
And that makes us remember everything we are trying to say better. So anytime we are trying to communicate something, it's always a good idea to tell a story. And especially to remember that people remember most what you say at the beginning and at the end. And why this is so important for the digital age? Because people don't read the same way they read the books. So this was a research done on people looking at the screen. And they basically gave a 200, 300 people an ability to look at the screen and they would kind of measure and film, track where their eyes were looking at the screen at any given time. And the most red, the red places are the places they looked at the most. So what you can see here is that when we are reading the screen, we are not reading the same as we would read a book, right? Right sentence after the other, one line after the other, paying the same attention to it. No, we actually look at the beginning, like the title of the post, maybe the first paragraph, and then we just skim through the rest of it. We don't read anything. How often do you read a whole post? Very rarely. What do you do instead? How often? Yes, yeah, see the keywords. So you have to keep that in mind when creating the content. How often do you share something without reading it? So it's mixed. People are likely as well to share it even if they only skim it. So in order to make it easy for them to skim it, while creating content, I realized, you know, that academic style of writing I had, just writing the full post and just leaving it there, which we call now wall of text, it's not going to get anyone's attention. Instead, we need to have the graphics, maybe a title to break it up, to emphasize and highlight all the keywords, and maybe add a bullet point or two, and use what journalists have used many, many years and many decades of now, of now is these attention traps. So you know how you, when you read an article and you, or you read a magazine, how they, in text, they have like little points or data that kind of jumps out of you at the screen? It's, it's used for the brain and for the eyes to rest. So you don't have to keep reading all the way. And today you can also create it using the platforms we have for creating content. Which brings me to my next point. It's also very important to know the platform you're using. If you want to create content online and start doing anything, maybe even create your own website or blog, today it's quite easy to do so. Because we have these free, free open platforms like WordPress that can be used by anyone that are very intuitive. So one of the first things we have to do is use them, learn how to use them and learn that how we can utilize them and the options they have to create and make our content even more engaging. And then finally, SEO. When you, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. So when you need information and you don't know something, but you want to find out, when you don't know where the restaurant, where the nearest restaurant is, or when you want to know how many seasons your favorite show, favorite show has, what do you do? You Google it, right? We all do that. But have you ever thought what happens at the other end? What makes the search results come up on top? Yes, the search engine. So when creating the content, any kind, especially if it's written and if it's online, we have to keep in mind that not only do people have to find it engaging and interesting, but the search engine, the machine, has to be able to read it as well. Now, there are many, many factors that contribute to the search engine, whether it is thesis or thesis or not. But the main thing is to follow the, to make it high quality, which, which means that you do, again, do everything you mentioned so far, you understand the audience, you understand a topic, you provide something that people are actually searching for, and in order for the machine to be able to match what you write about and what people are searching for, you have to use the same keywords. Because that is what the machine will be reading and what we'll be presenting the content for. And then, of course, there are the graphics. 
We remember better when we see something as a graphic. And if we can create a graphic or a video today, it will probably go much, much better than just writing a 2,000 word plus blog post. Why? Because people just remember it better. And more of your brain is engaged. Not only your vernacular area, but your visual context as well. So what we have here is one of the blog posts we created because it was kind of challenging to explain how the DNS system works. We used a graphic to kind of explain it better. And the idea was to explain how when you type a website address in, the, in, the, in the, your browser, how does it actually give you the image you see. And we basically the internet works on numbers, right? And every website is actually has a number as an address. But it would be crazy if we had to remember all of these strings of numbers, like you see there, in order to visit, for example, or at least open, open even Facebook, or whatever media, or Netflix, or whatever portal we read. That is why we have translated into words and into strings of text that are easily remembered and we can enter. And this is an example that we did in Montenegro which is, again, for a client who wanted to raise awareness about what we can do to help our environment. And it would be easy, again, to create a really long content about it, but much more efficient, especially because we were talking to someone like yourself and younger, to create it using really short, short text and using memorable graphics. So when you create content, you not only have to think about the text you use, but also all, all the other ways you can, use, you can in, make it even more engaging and even more easier to remember. Now the second part is sales. What I didn't realize when I started writing that post is that I'm not writing the post just because somebody asked me to write it. And I'm not only writing it to tell a story about a topic I was given. I'm writing it because that post serves a purpose as any piece of content you create in digital marketing. Like that ad we saw serves a purpose. Or like the graphics we saw serves a purpose. And in the case of a blog post, it can be maybe to invite people to read more about a topic. So that is why you also have the elements that invite you to do that. Or maybe to sign up for the newsletter and read more about it later or maybe directly to buy something, but being part of the sale, sale, selling process and understanding how sales work is not always about buy now, here's the discount, grab it now before it goes away. Because not everyone you're addressing will be ready to do the purchase at the moment, which is why you have to give them something else to do just to keep them interested and to keep them going through that process of sales and social media. Every time you create a piece of content or something for digital marketing, you also have to think, okay, how can I repurpose this? How can I use it in another way? And for example, here, you can have a piece of blog post and then create graphics based on it. And I really like that this example is in English because it was a study done in the US on how um, Generation Alpha is using technology from the perspective of their parents and the role parents have in protecting them online. So we of course did the research and it was a really big campaign that is still ongoing. We wrote a lot of blog posts explaining the research in, diff in different areas and of course based on that creating then the graphics and everything else that followed through the campaign. So that is another thing to think about. And finally, it is nothing if we don't have the analytics part of it. Everything you create, you have to track what is the performance of it and what is the end result. Because only then you will know how to do better and better. So now that she explained all of this to me, I was like, oh my god, I'm never going to remember all of this ever. But it is not actually like that. In time you realize that this also becomes a part of your routine. Uh, if you want to create content from the internet, the most important thing is to know that it's okay maybe if you don't know how to do it now. Because to be honest, uh, in my, at my university nobody really taught me this. Not any of this. 
and I didn't have anywhere to learn, and I was lucky to have someone who will teach me. And this was especially true six years ago, when we didn't even have nowhere to read it from. And you are very, very lucky, because now you have conferences like this, and maybe open education is in your area, and if not, then online, or the resources you need to explain this in a way that you can start maybe creating content yourself today. So, the idea of everything I showed you is not to tell you how you have to know all of this science stuff or to remember all of this to start anything, but to know that when people ask you what are you doing and if you, if you tell me that you're in digital marketing, I'm going to tell you, could you elaborate please? Because everything I mentioned so far can be a specialization and a job opportunity in itself. So in my team, there are people who are content strategists, which when a company comes to us and says, okay, we want to promote this product, how would you suggest to do that? Maybe through social media, or to creating blog posts, or to creating videos, or maybe uh, doing an offline campaign. There is always someone who thinks about strategy first, who does the research, who thinks about the market, and who sets the stage for all the rest of us. And then there is someone who thinks about the slogans, who thinks about the content, who is the writer behind it. Maybe then there is someone who designs everything, who builds the logo, the visual identity, who creates those ads, both on social media or something you can see in the city in the billboard. Then there is someone who is just the SEO specialist, who knows and follows how the search engine works and makes sure that everything we create is actually seen. Because wouldn't it be the shame that we spent all this time creating something that nobody ever saw? So this is what these people do. Then there are people who are in charge of social media. The UX designers who make sure that when you visit the site you actually find everything you want and it is, um, it really looks actually really pretty and easy to manage and navigate. It looks intuitive. The data analysts, the digital email marketers, the video editors. What I want to show you with this is that digital marketing is a booming industry. And why? Would you say that you spend more time on TV during the day or on your phones, on your laptops and computers? Which one of those? Okay, well, it, this is actually the research precise, shows precisely that. For me, I don't even turn it on anymore. The only reason I have a TV in my home is because when my mom and dad comes to visit, they really love their TV shows, and I really want to make them happy. But this year was the first point in time where the daily usage of internet and the mobile phones and the laptops was greater than the time people spent watching TV, which means that as you already said, if you want to be found by, by your users, you have to be where they are. If you are a restaurant in the Elbasan area, when we came here and we were searching for somewhere to go to lunch, we are of course going to Google it. And if you want us to go there and find you, you have to be where we are searching for you. And that is online. And more and more companies, especially in the region worldwide, it's a trend, has been a trend for a decade now, are trying to precisely do that, position themselves online, and they're investing a lot. It is estimated that online advertising will reach $329 billion in 2021, and it will make almost 50% of all ads spent. What this means is a greater shift. Previously, a company, companies would only invest in traditional media. They would put up a billboard, put a TV ad, and consider, okay, that is done. But digital marketing actually allows you to not only put up an ad and see, okay, who sees it, sees it, and who got, gets caught on it, that's fine. That's called the spray and pray method. You put one message and who reacts, that's fine. But digital marketing actually allows you to tailor every message and every ad to the particular person seeing it. And that means that you can create something more personalized and something people really react to better. And that is why more and more companies are shifting their budgets from the traditional to the digital, of course. And then the social referral. So it is estimated that almost the, the amount of traffic that e-commerce sites 
get from social media has grown by over 110% over the past two years. What does that mean? How many of you use Instagram? Oh yeah, all of you. Uh, so the point is, you, have, you might have recently seen these labels that when you watch an image, it tells you what's on the image. Have you noticed it? So what happened? Previously, what I mentioned here is that most of the sites, most of the brands would have their label on Instagram posts, and when you click on the, on the label, you would be redirected to their e-commerce site. But recently, they created their own e-commerce platform. So this means that now you don't even have to go away from Instagram. You can complete the purchase in the app itself. So what this means? This means that the sites that previously relied on Instagram greatly to bring them traffic to their sites so somebody can buy a dress or buy a watch or buy anything you needed on uh, AliExpress or Amazon or whatever, are going to go to their site and do it. No, now you are doing that on Instagram because it's seamless and it's easy and it's just one click away. So this means that the job of people doing social media and especially advertising on Instagram has changed. This means that the jobs of people who are uh, ma maintaining the e-commerce sites has changed. And also the, the guys who are doing the sales in the companies has changed. Which all comes to show that things are changing very, very quickly. And especially if you do digital marketing, it means that you have to keep learning and have to keep growing because you never know what platform is going to be the next one and you never know what is going to be the next iteration of the platforms we are now using. And now to the perks. Does anyone know what this is? Netflix? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, this <laughs> so I recommend you, I have a really good show on Netflix to recommend you. It's called The Good Place and I really love it. Um, it's, it has been built to have only four seasons, which means the quality remains the same throughout and they're not just filming episodes because they want more money from it. But in that show they're exploring the idea of an afterlife and they say on Earth, while we are living, the timeline goes like this, chronologically. One thing happens after the other. In the afterlife, they say it's not like that. It twirls and weaves and you go forward and backwards and then come again. And it, they say the kind of the timeline creates this Jeremy Barry. It looks like that. And it is connected to even what Nicola was telling you about as the first lecture of the day. Your careers are not going to be linear. You are not going to go into the company and spend your whole working age there. That is highly, highly unlikely to happen. Instead, you may start working somewhere, maybe get bored or get tired or maybe just want to change something and you will step into something else. If you are in digital marketing, it can also mean that you maybe start as a freelancer then work for a digital marketing agency. Maybe start working for a corporation. And then once you decide you want to do something else, do like Kate did and start your own company and become an entrepreneur. So anything you do actually, your career will not be straight upwards paths. Sometimes you'll have to take a step backwards, but it will only be backwards at that moment. Because what you want to do with your careers is create the experiences and go towards environment and opportunities that will allow you to grow and stay relevant and stay competitive. And of course, keep learning and keep growing. Now the second part, when you are in digital marketing especially, and when you are doing any of these other jobs that can be done online basically, where you need only your computer and internet connection to finish it, you may be this person, or you may actually be this person. So I was thinking what to put on this slide and then of course um, I realized that maybe it's just best to use my example. So this may be 
and may look like, like a typical touristy photo, right? Well, actually it's not. Uh, I've been working there. Um, I have the, the greatest possibility and the privilege ever to keep working wherever I am at at the moment. Because once you realize that the only thing connecting you to your work is the laptop and internet connection, you can work from wherever, whenever. And since we realized that, in my company, we decided to allow people to arrange their working hours the way they think it is best. And at the beginning, it may seem a bit chaotic because there is no really a rule that everyone has to come at 8 and leave at 4. You come when you think you are ready for work and when it works best for you. And then you work at whatever time works best and from wherever you want to. As long as the work is finished, everything is fine. So for example, this really works for me because I love to travel and I also really like to work in the evenings. Which means that I can get some of the work done during the day, maybe like two or three or four hours. And then in the evening, once everyone is asleep and I'm completely alone and nobody's speaking and no mails are incoming, I can take care of some work aside from that. And opportunities and careers in the digital sphere, and digital marketing is just one example, allow you to live locally and work locally. Because, as Nicola, for example, said, you have Upwork where you can, once you have the skills, you can list everything you want to do, you can do, and you can find a buyer or a contractor for those services, which means that you can work from wherever, including your home. And there is a great value in having your friends and family and building your life in the community that you already have when you are already known. And at the same time, making use of all the technology and, the, glo and the, the global aspect of living has to offer. Because, for example, you may be paid in a hard currency. Uh, you may even earn more than you, what you can do in a traditional regular job and still be living in a place you love. And what I realized from my example is that I don't think that building a company and growing it so quickly would be possible in, for example, as we did, would be possible in a company, in a country like the UK, the US, even Germany. Why? Because one of the greatest challenges we face is not finding companies we can work with, it's finding people who can do the work. So one of the things we as a company do is try to educate young people when it comes to digital marketing. Because when we try to find content writers, or designers, or SEO specialists, or social media specialists, we have a really hard time doing that. Because there is nowhere people, and especially students, can learn it from. And we have to create those learning opportunities. Which is another reason why conferences like this one are especially important and great. So, I had, I had a really difficult task to introduce you to the world of digital marketing and to maybe inspire you to pursue it. I hope you saw that when we say digital marketing and mention digital marketing in industry, you remember two things. First of all, there is a lot of potential and whatever your interest is, interests are, you can start something and pursue them in that area. And the second, it allows you to enter a world of technology which you never know where it will take you and to maybe uh, create a life that you want to. And that is actually a digital marketing for me. The opportunity to create a life that you want and that will work for you. And I hope you utilize it and good luck in that process. Thank you.